Good afternoon, everyone. It is our second national day of truth and reconciliation. So we are, you know, very, um, very much excited to be celebrating that today and acknowledging that today and thrilled to welcome the principal of Mokwate and a prolific chair and director of numerous boards from Bingwi Nayashi Anishinaabek First Nations, or in English, Sandpoint First Nations, JP Gladu. JP, I'm so thrilled to have you here. Aspen, thank you. And perfect pronunciation. It's really <laughs> nice to be here. Thank you. I'm, I'm thrilled to have you. Um, I was taking, you know, numerous notes in your presentation earlier. It was so, re so well received. Everyone was very engaged. So um, hard for me to even know where to begin on this. Uh, you talked a lot about, you know, your presentation focused on, you know, caring and believing and doing. Um, let's kind of just dig into there. What, what do you want to chat about? Values. Values. I, I love think, that. I think values are the foundation to everything. If you can't align on your values, you can't do business together. Yeah. But even more than that, especially with the Indigenous community, because the trust has been so fractured for so long that we've got to reestablish that trust. And there's lots of things you can do to establish that trust. Mm -hmm. um, but if you can build the trust, align your values, um, I know the people in the room today and over the last couple of days so I've got to talk. To, I've, I've known many of them for years, um, met a lot of new friends, and I can tell people really care. And I believe that they believe that they can make an, a positive impact in the relationships with Indigenous communities mm -hmm. through the forest sector. Um, and they're doing great things. I think we can do more. Yeah. And that's part of my whole shtick in the world these days is like, let's push the boundaries. Status quo is not acceptable. And we know that as a country. Yeah. So what are we going to do together? Because you care and you believe. Now let's do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. And and uh, this is pretty personal for you. I mean, of course, um, you know, Indigenous relations, economic reconciliation, that's really critical for you um, coming from, uh, from Sandpoint First Nations, but also the forestry side of things. You have a personal connection there as well. I do. Well, you know, it's uh, my grandfather was a logger. My dad was a logger. Actually, really quick story about my dad. He was an incredible hockey player um, in the region. Uh, I think he was 16 years old, got, in play, got invited to play for the London Knights. Everybody believed him. But he went to, he chose the forestry sector because he was making money to support, you know, uh, the family. Mm -hmm. And um, But, you know, logging has been his whole life. Um, and then he became chief of my community. Um, and he took that passion for the forest sector, um, and everything that it has, because it, he's imprinted upon me respect for the land where I'm a big hunter and a big fisher. And the best thing you can do is respect the animals by using the meat and sharing it with your family and your friends and your community. And he took all of that and he put that into the energy of our community. Now we have a sawmill, mm -hmm. we've got a bio heat, um, center on the docket, and we've got a partnership with another organization around using the biomass for uh, gas generation. Um, cool. So it is very personal to me. Yeah. Um, it's because it was um, where my my family, my dad was the, the, the breadwinner mostly, was able to put money on the table, our food on the table from the money he generated. And I got to play hockey and I got to do all these things that a lot of other kids got to do. And that's not the case for uh, a lot of our indigenous kids. Yeah. And um, that's very personal. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and you shared with us lots about your daughter in your presentation earlier. Tell us a little bit about your relationship with her and, and, and uh, some of the opportunities that you have seen is really key for her to make yeah. sure that she's had. Yeah, you can see the emotion in my eyes about how much I love my daughter. Um, she's, uh, she's a great young woman. She's going to be 19 in June or January. Uh, she's at uh, Montreal College. She's an incredible artist and she loves hair and makeup. And she's in the hair design school at LaSalle College. Um, ever since she was a little kid, I always brought her to the land, um, even though she lived in, well, we lived in Ottawa for years and she lived there with her mom and her mom and I are dear friends to this day. Um, but I always brought her to the land and it's rubbed off on her. It's kind of mm -hmm. knock off the old block where um, there was a question that came from the audience today about two eyed seeing or or mm -hmm. walking two worlds. And I've done that a lot of my career, walking the two worlds. And my daughter's like that. You know, she functions at a high level in the city. And when she comes to the bush, man, she is just a kick, you know what, in the butt. <laughs> Young Indigenous woman. 
you know, we were setting the guns this summer for moose hunting and, um, at 125 yards, she was maybe a center off centimeter off That's the center. Unreal. And, um, she shoots birds. We did, she hasn't gotten her first moose yet, but we've gotten a moose together and she's a great fisher girl. And again, I couldn't be prouder of who she is as a person. That is so awesome. JP. Um, I would love to talk about your family more and more and more, but I want to bring us back to, um, you mentioned some of the, uh, some of the key partnerships and, and key opportunities that you've seen, you know, so far, uh, partners between the sector and indigenous communities. Um, what are some of the, the key opportunities that you see to, ev- um, elevate indigenous voices in our sector? Well, maybe I'll unpack it a little bit more than in just the natural resource sector. Yeah. And, and, you know, forestry is my first love. I mean, I'm a forester by training. Um, and if I draw from experiences in other sectors and just the way the world, our country is going, um, ownership mm-hmm. of infrastructure, ownership of projects and business is just the way of the future. And that's where we start. We need to start to set our minds um, in the forestry sector and our communities about what that's going to look like and how we all benefit from that. It's that's just the shift mm-hmm. um, and shift as they say happens. Yeah. Um, and you know, it gets down to again, the values. And if I'm going into any environment, whether, and there's a question from education today, mm-hmm. I want to see myself in that environment. I don't want to be the sole person. And that's yeah. you know, 15, 20 years ago, Many of the people that I've looked up to, like the Phil Fontaines of the world, and the Chief Jim Boucher's of the world, they were the, often the lone voice. Mm-hmm. That's not necessary anymore. Yeah. I want to see myself in management. I want to see myself on the board of directors. I want to see myself as the operator. I want to see myself in the mill. Mm-hmm. Um, and from there, the trust that I ta- we were just talking about starts to build. Yeah. And the overlap of the values values become clearer. And the opportunities become more in focus about where we can go because we've established a relationship. Yeah. And so it really just gets down to relationships and you talk about what possible is. Mm-hmm. And we can certainly get into ownership projects because they're happening in every sector now. Um, and I hope to see more of that in the forestry sector. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't agree more. Um, talking about the shifts that we're seeing, you know, you've had tons of opportunities like this, I know, to speak, you know, all across Canada um, to two different industries about, you know, elevating these voices, uh, building more partnerships, economic reconciliation. What are you seeing? Are you seeing, you know, more kind of engagement with leadership opportunities for people in Indigenous communities? 100 percent. You know, I've been in this work now for 30 years and it's like, oh, my gosh, 30 years. And where the heck did the time goes? Um Aspen, this is where you jump in and say, oh, no, you don't look like you're in your 50s. Well, almost 50. You look great, truly. <laughs> I'm just teasing you. Um, and in the last five years, since the amazing work of, of just uh, the Justinator, Marie Sinclair, um, and, you know, the, the 215, the original mm-hmm. 215, you know, Canada has woken up. And, and many of the members that I talked to over dinner and lunch and coffee and, and beer over the last mm-hmm. couple of days, they were very humble and going in there like we didn't know yeah right but let's make a change and i see it across all sectors sectors you would never think would engage the indigenous community are now engaging the indigenous community i believe you know i know that our country is largely woken up to this past reality that has significant impact today and will into the future and i think They're struggling on the right questions to ask. Mm -hmm. And I believe that they're also wanting to do the right things. They just don't know how. Mm -hmm. And so they're engaging folks like myself and my friend Mokwate and other amazing Indigenous people and our allies who are non-Indigenous, like the Ken Coates of the world, who is a dear friend. Um, And they're asking how we can, what we can do together. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the whole point of this. Like, um, David McFadden this morning, when I was listening to his reflections on Truth and Reconciliation Day, and he ended it off that we're human beings and we want to be acknowledged. I mean, it doesn't matter who you are. You just want a sense that people see you Mm -hmm. and that they believe you. And Canada now sees us and now they believe us. And it goes back to what I was talking about, caring, believing. Now, what are we going to do? 
Yeah, exactly. And and I think um, to your point, what Dave was sharing with us earlier, that is so powerful. Like we want to be seen, we want to be heard, we want to be believed. And and I mean, that aligns perfectly with your presentation. I think that's excellent. Um, I would love to hear, you know, today is the second national day for truth and reconciliation. Why is that important for you? We need, this is not a one hit wonder or a one mm -hmm. point in history. This is our country's opportunity to carry the truth and forward for future generations and continually improve how we're going to reconcile our relationship yeah. um, in all facets and all sectors and all nations. This is important because it's a reminder every year, just like 9-11 happens. And when people, you would never dare say to an American, oh, why don't you just get over 9-11? Uh, you wouldn't say that to an indigenous person. We'll just get over the past. Yeah. This is a recognition of it every year. And organizations and people should plan for their yearly events, for their yearly uh, impact. It's just not this week or yeah. today or this month. It's all year round. And this is the reminder to amplify that energy in your efforts to make sure that we continue this conversation mm -hmm. because this path is not going to be healed overnight. Yes. I mean, the hurt along this path is not going to be healed overnight. Yeah, absolutely. And it is, it is a 365 effort. It is a 365 conversation. It's not just today. Today is, you know, a great opportunity for us to talk about it and to bring more attention to it, but it does have to continue on and on and on. 100%. Something else I want to come back to that you spoke about uh, really passionately in your presentation earlier was Indigenous participation in natural resource development and how we're hearing a lot of things in the media, a lot of mixed perspectives, and you had an interesting take on it. Let's dig into that. You know, absolutely. Um, I think the world and Canadians have largely thought that we're opposed to resource development. And, you know, what I shared with this sector, certainly the sector has had its dark past where logging occurred in our backyards and, you know, messes were left behind and we saw no benefit, no opportunity. And all we got was a mess. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, the sector has done a lot over time and there's a lot of great work done by a lot of great people. And as a result of that change, you know, our people are certainly opposed to the way that resource development has done in the past in oil and gas, mining, forestry. But now what you're seeing is strong consultation. You're seeing room, like the Enbridge announcement just the other day yeah. for equity participation, uh, strong, robust supply chains. We're for that. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the Indigenous Resource Network polling, 65% of Indigenous people support or strongly mm -hmm. support responsible resource development. Only 23% are opposed, and Kel mm -hmm. that's pretty reflective of any society. But the number of us that are actually supportive of resource development, um, that message isn't getting amplified. And the unfortunate part is that we've got these Hollywood stars, stars and as I was joking, I picked a fight with the Incredible Hulk. <laughs> And uh, well, look at these pipes. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. I know. I see. Oh I my see. gosh. Don't get me started. My money's on you. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I picked a fight with Ruffalo and DiCaprio and Fonda and even our own Mr. Young about their stances on, you know, oil and gas as an example. Um, you know, how much time have they spent in our communities really understanding? They're inadvertently uh, obstructing our opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, they're inadvertently obstructing our capital flow um, so that we can derive a future for our communities. Um, they're, it, it's just a mess. But there are yeah. some really great organ, uh, environmental organizations that are working in good faith to um, find the balance between responsible, mm -hmm. sustainable resource development. And, um, you know, I don't think the reasonable environmental groups get up in the morning and figure out how they're going to destroy an economy and jobs. And I don't think the forestry sector gets up in the morning and thinking about how we're going to destroy the environment. So it's just about, again, what are our values? But it's got to be clearly communicated that Indigenous people, when done right in our communities, are largely very supportive mm -hmm. of resource development, including yeah. forestry. Absolutely. Um, you know, one of the other, I think, really powerful calls to action that we heard in your presentation this morning was 
come on out to my community. Come on out to to your local communities. Why is that so important? You only get a partial perspective. If I have to have a conversation in your boardroom and yeah, some of them are really nice. <laughs> um, you're only going to really feel it. I'm going to give you the same messaging for the most part. But yeah. I tell you, when I give you that messaging when we're on the land and when we're fishing or we're eating my mom's bannock or moose stew, mm -hmm. what's going to emanate from me and what you're going to see in my environment is a much more uh, robust and full picture of what I'm talking about. Yeah. And I, I, you know, it's part of my strategy and I do a lot of work with corporations and I've presented to boards. I mean, I just come out to my community and mm -hmm. for the sector and many people do, they just go to the community and, and that's the most important thing you do. Cause again, it's always going back to caring, believing and doing and developing trust and you can't develop trust in their downtown boardrooms. Yeah. It's, that's not the way you do it. Well, um, JP, this has been so fantastic. I know there's lots of different things that we could talk about, but if there's one thing that folks could take away from your presentation or from our conversation today, what would that be? It goes back to my three points. I know that you care and I hope that you believe now it's time to do. Yeah. So, thank you very much. Steve. Thanks, Aspen. <laughs>